Welcome everyone that's here uh, and everybody watching this uh, on a recorded version. This is our Lone Star Capital uh, second quarter 2022 portfolio analysis. So we'll be sharing some uh, updates about what happened over the last quarter, what we're looking forward to next quarter, and then also looking into our dashboard that we use um, and just have a couple, couple of topics to, uh, to mention. So if anyone has questions, feel free to um, either verbally or, or um, electronically post them and we can answer them in real time uh, or feel free to save them for the end if you prefer. So over the last quarter, um, we were quite busy and that's not stopped this quarter as well, being that we're already a month or so, uh, more than a month into Q3. Over the last quarter, uh, we did acquire two additional new properties. So the first broad Stonebriar Forest was closed May 2nd, um, and that is about 342 units. Um, we have just, just about started our CapEx there, uh, which I'll talk about in the next uh, two slides. Um, but so far, takeover went well, and um, super excited about this property, adding it to our portfolio. It's our largest um, unit count to date, and this is in West Houston, 1983 vintage. Uh, second is Timberwalk, and this actually closed um, recently. It was Q3. It was July 13th, it was supposed to be um, in Q2, but was slightly delayed um, for some I guess you could say lender related um, due diligence, uh, nothing serious, but just took a little bit longer than we expected. Um, but we worked with the seller, pushed through, worked with the lender and we're able to close it successfully. Um, so super excited about that as well. 300 units that's in Northwest Houston. Um, and so these properties are, are somewhat close to each other. Timberwalk, um, so if you go to the uh, next part there, dispositions, Verandas of Bear Creek, we sold. Um, that was sold on April 27th, um, and those are some metrics there. We shared this last quarter as well, but these metrics have been slightly uh, updated, um, and they turned out better just as, as some final receivables came in uh, tax and insurance-wise. Um, and as far as the equity multiple for the project, I believe is about two and a quarter. Uh, so really, really went well. Um, very excited about that. Uh, with Timberwalk, though, so we sold Verandas at Bear Creek. Timberwalk is right in the same neighborhood, uh, very, very close to it. And um, if you like that market, that area. So we purchased that property. And as you'll see at the end of this, we actually have another property under contract, which is basically right across, uh, you know, right across the street, very close to it. Uh, and so there we're hoping to capture uh, some operational synergies uh, and efficiency by having the two properties close to each other, particularly um, on payroll, uh, maybe some r &M as well. But yeah, interesting that we sold this one property and then now we're acquiring two uh, literally in the same several block radius. Uh, so it was busy, busy quarter. Um, we go forward. So in addition to uh, making moves um, in terms of our overall portfolio count, uh, our CapEx schedule is also very, very busy. Landing at Pinewood Park, uh, our CapEx plan is essentially done. We had one additional um, task that we were going to implement and it was, it was basically phase two of a renovation of a, a derelict basketball court. We completed a playground, um, installation and we were going to turn the other half into a soccer pitch and we put that on hold because the property is actually under uh, contract uh, to be sold so we're very uh, very happy about that and really excited to mention that this is going to be our first actual 1031 out so we're going to be 1031ing from this property uh, into uh, another property which I'll mention later and I already mentioned it before Madison at Bear Creek um, and so super excited to add this um, ability to our uh, just overall deal flow um, going forward. So there you can see everything's completed. We came in under budget. Um, even if we were to complete the other item that I mentioned, the basketball court phase two, 
uh, we'd still be right on budget. So the, the underwriting was spot on there. Kudos to Rob and Charles. Uh, in terms of Solano, uh, we're about 85% scheduled and 80% done. Solano, uh, the exterior plan is essentially all wrapped up, uh, all finished. We're working through the interiors now. We're doing renovations on the second story units because uh, the first floor units were pretty much all renovated after a uh, hurricane came and flooding. So there we're installing some washers and dryers and units uh, where there are connections available and really looking to turbocharge this. Um, we're about a, a year in at this point uh, to, to our CapEx plan and uh, our plan is to have it stabilized within 24 months. So we're on schedule there, um, looking to try and finish up early if possible, just so that we can keep um, bumping the rents uh, there and uh, pushing our collections. Hollister as well uh, is more so completed uh, and scheduled than Solano. Hollister we acquired in November. Solano was acquired in July of last year, uh, but Hollister had a much lighter CapEx plan. Uh, so the spend was much less and the overall scope was much less. We weren't doing really anything to the interiors uh, other than a smart home package. So we're installing smart locks throughout um, and then installing some washers and dryers as well. And the items that have not been completed other than a few units that are awaiting the remaining smart locks to be installed uh, and washer dryers, we are converting uh, one of the laundry rooms to a fitness center. So currently there are two, the property is split in two phases uh, with a side street in between the two. There were actually two different properties and a convenience store at one point. And then the prior seller um, purchased all three and put them together into one overall property, which we bought the convenience store turned into a leasing office and several apartments as well. But so anyway, one of the uh, laundry rooms is going to be converted into a fitness center. And our plan there is to install washer dryers in 60% of the units, at which point we can delete one of those laundry rooms uh, because you know people have either washers in their unit or um, they can use that other one laundry room in phase one. And we'll install a nice fitness center there to round out the other amenities. Uh, so that's going along. We're currently way under budget there. For Encore and Park, these were properties acquired in 2022. Encore, oh, pardon me, Encore was actually acquired in December, um, but close to the end of the year, um, late, late December. And Park was acquired in February. Um, here we're about halfway completed and, and mostly uh, roughly two thirds scheduled. Turn that off. Um, here, the same thing, exterior wise. Uh, we're pretty much completed um, and we're working through our interiors. We've been renovating units at turn, um, which we are thinking that we're gonna start getting waivers to begin renovations on occupied units as well, if tenants are willing uh, for us to, to go ahead and do that and they're okay with a little bit of dust and uh, debris for a, a moment. Um, but what we're really happy about here is we haven't, had a very large spend per unit, same thing on Solano, uh, interior wise, and our rents are pretty much at um, our market rents or our pro forma rents already. So we're, we're undergoing discussions and getting additional bids uh, here to see if we should go and round out our full CapEx plan, which included granite throughout. The reason that we were a little tentative to go that route off the bat is because, I don't know if anybody's seen, but the cost of granite has really skyrocketed. I mean, it's almost three times our initial uh, projections and that's due to supply chain and, and other issues that you've heard about ad nauseum. Um, but we have recently reached out to two other new suppliers uh, who were able to, to provide a large supply in aggregate and so we're testing maybe if we, on Encore um, and Solano, maybe we buy in bulk um, there and implement those in those units or potentially on Encore, um, pardon me, on Park, we might install grant in a handful of units to go forward um, and test out if we can get rent above um, our underwritten pro forma rents because we're essentially there right now. 
Um, and so here we're quite under budget. It's a little, uh, I don't wanna say inaccurate, but that will obviously change. These are uh, actual versus budget to date. And so our interior spend compared to our budget, our budget is obviously quite high uh, compared to the amount that we've spent. And that's per um, in aggregate. And so our budget is obviously for the entire property. So those will definitely come down, um, but we're still confident that we'll be able to come in under budget uh, regardless, you know, whether we do grant it or not. So getting into the dashboards, we look at a, a number of different things um, on a monthly basis, quarterly, um, et cetera. So this is a, a visualization of uh, p and uh, and just um, top subtotals. So we can drill down if we wanted to and look at individual light items. Uh, you know, um, for instance, a particular maintenance salary versus leasing salary or whatever, maybe different contracts. But so this is for the landing. And I was thinking maybe um, it might be interesting just to look at the landing, which we have owned for about a year, as I mentioned, um, and is under contract to be sold. So it's currently the longest tenured property in our portfolio. And then uh, also, and just as we go through these additional slides, look at um, Encore, uh, which I mentioned we bought in uh, late December of last year. But so just in terms of trend, and I hope this bar isn't in the way, um, you can see this is, I don't know if this is cut off for you guys, but this is income um, up here, expenses, NOI. And so you can see that there's noise on takeover um, when just different um, accounts are being transitioned from uh, the prior owner. And so there's noise here, but you can see the trend is very, very positive. We're now up above our budgeted amount uh, monthly, which we're super happy about that. Expenses uh, have climbed as well, uh, which we're keeping them, them in check. Um, these last few months have been uh, results, as you can see, uh, I mean, this was utilities. Utility costs have, have jumped quite a bit, I'm sure, as everybody has been seeing as well. And so one thing that we've been doing to kind of counteract that or to just be, to be proactive and, and try and be smart there is instead of locking into long-term fixed rates right now, uh, which is kind of the opposite of, of um, that perhaps, but instead of locking into long-term fixed rates, even if we went with a 60-month contract, uh, the electric and gas are still super high in Houston. So we've been able to negotiate with our broker uh, floating, uh, floating spreads essentially on top of a, a channel index. And so we have that in place for our, our new, newly acquired properties other than uh, one I'll mention, Five Oaks, which we actually got really, really lucky on um, that the prior owner uh, locked into a contract, I believe in 2019 or 2020 when rates were, were at a really low um, rate. And so we were able to get a five-year contract there. So we're inheriting um, a utility rate that's you know, pretty much unheard of. We couldn't get it today. And so we're super happy there. But to mitigate these other um, rates, we are going an index route. And then probably in about we're thinking six months to nine months, hopefully uh, utility gas electric prices have come down and then most likely we'd lock into a, a fixed rate there. Um, but so that's one, one way that we're trying to mitigate uh, these additional costs and keep our expenses in check. So I don't know if anybody has seen this, but this is probably uh, glaring to, to you. You can see that this is a huge, huge jump here, huge decrease in expenses. Look like looks like that could be something is just grossly wrong with the data. Um, it's actually not, it has to do with taxes in that month. And so if we go to May, you can see there are taxes were um, hugely under our budget. And this is due to a collection of a tax refund that we received for 2021. And so in Texas, uh, basically you can contest uh, property value and then usually we'll push it all the way to litigation. And so we did that, we got our property taxes reduced. Um, and finally in May uh, of 2022, we received that check for 2021. Um, so it's kind of a, I mean, if I can speak frankly, kind of a game really playing uh, this and seems like you know, a lot of people want to 
to get paid to do this, this extra work, uh, which is just contesting uh, property values and then going through litigation. But in any case, we received that money. We were happy about it. Um, and we are continuing to do it for, for all of our properties going forward. Um, and it seems like most, most other players in the MSA do that as well. But so this is the landing. Um, and if you look at the most recent month, so as you can see here that, as I mentioned before, it was um, not a long road, but it was quite challenging. In these few months here, we had about 40 plus down units. Um, and so that's why our income is way under our budget. But as we brought those units online, we repaired them, renovated them, uh, and also enhanced the property as well. Our NOI has, or pardon me, our operating income has really been increasing. And that's just a function or a result of all that hard work and leasing as well. In addition, these expenses are rising now as well because uh, these invoices and amounts that we were paying, we're now having to pay these off. Um, and a lot of times we're receiving invoices late. Um, and so this, this is basically a symptom of this. And so it will even out in the end um, if this were to keep, keep going. Looking at Encore, so Encore we took over in December, basically the end of December, January was really the first full month. Um, it's a bit more choppy. And as you can see, NOI is starting to level out, which this is usually the case. There's usually um, quite a big uh, outperformance at the beginning. And again, that's just due to noise. This will even out. And if you look at um, our financials, our actual compared to our budget, compared to our underwriting as time progresses, usually the Delta gets um, much tighter. And uh, so this is, you know, not, nothing to be worried about. We, we kind of expect this trend and you can see it. I mean, even if you look at other properties, Solano, same thing. Um, this is largely a result of um, some occupancy and turnover and such. But again, it usually starts out quite high and then sort of levels off and now it's picking back up. So feeding into our PL uh, is our rents, other income. And so this is showing collections uh, in aggregate per property. So this is the landing. You can see overall the, the collections are quite stable. Uh, this is only showing February forward. Uh, this graph here, just to make it consistent, is just as of the 28th. And so to filter out um, an outlier, which is January, based on our accounting periods, which ends at the 25th. We remove that just to, to make it a little more clear. This slightly um, could be worrisome that July collections have, have dipped here. Um, in terms of just the overall pace, we like to see everything in. Uh, ideally, by the 6th, 7th, 8th, somewhere in there, by the 10th, definitely. So. Um, mostly we're, we're pretty consistent here. Uh, and the reason for that is so that we can manage our mortgage payments. We definitely like to keep our um, operating accounts not full, if that's a good way to say it. Uh, just in terms of cash management, we rather keep money in reserves. And at the end of the month, have our operating account pretty, pretty close to zeroed out, uh, just for uh, overall management and security purposes. Um, and this, I do believe, is largely a function of rent relief. Uh, so this property, Solano, some of the other properties get uh, still get a large amount of tenants' rents from uh, rent relief programs, whether it be from the state uh, or charities or other, other um, uh, venues or groups. So this isn't as worrisome. You can even see on Solano. It's a lot, uh, you know, it's a little more choppy. Um, and that's due to, again, these, these rent relief programs sending funds kind of on their own schedule or, you know, usually in bulk uh, is the way it comes in. So maybe nothing comes in for a month and then a, a huge batch comes in. This, uh, this outlier here was actually due to um, quite a bit of uh, prepayments here. And that was, again, a reflection of the rent relief programs. Um, in terms of delinquency, so this is somewhat concerning. Um, we have reached out to all, obviously all these tenants. 
um, but we're more concerned with 30, 60, 90 days. You know, if maybe they're a little bit late here, but they catch up, uh, not a huge issue. I mean, it definitely does impact operations. So we want to reduce that and get all these numbers down as low as we can. Um, but definitely the, the numbers that we're more so worried about are the longer term delinquency because that's when eviction uh, will potentially kick in. Um, but this is just a kind of a, a lingering challenge of, again, dealing with rent relief programs and cash flows not being particularly um, right on schedule. So that's one thing that we're having to manage. In addition, if we look at Broadstone, so this is uh, property, again, our, our second most recent acquisition behind Timberwalk. This was acquired in May. This looks probably crazy here. I'm sure people are saying I must have done something very badly with the, the data or something's wrong with our API key. Um, but it's actually not, this is correct. So this is just a true up at the end of the month by our accountant. Um, if we were going to actually put it in by day to day, it, the, the trend is quite similar to these months. However, on Broadstone, so one additional item that we're having to deal with is this account per the lender uh, has a DACA account. So it's basically a, an additional operating account held with the lender uh, at their bank. It's a, a bank was the lender, private bank. And so all of the deposits have to be uh, deposited there. And then once a week and on the first of the month, they sweep that account to our actual operating account, which we pay all our AP and, and other items from. So this, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's definitely something we try to avoid if possible. I, I know um, during the negotiations, we pushed back on it, but because we were getting a loan from a bank, they said, no, this is something that uh, we're not uh, gonna, gonna budge on. So as I mentioned before, where we like to have our operating accounts almost zeroed out at the end of the month, here, uh, we're having to keep a little more cash on hand there um, from our reserves and just be a little um, more, I mean, we are diligent, but be a little more diligent or aware of our uh, mortgage payments as well. Um, usually they come out around the sixth or eighth, but they can fluctuate depending on weekends and such. And so being that we're only getting those rents once a week instead of daily, uh, just adds a little bit of complexity there. Uh, so I think, Rob, myself, Kent, our team would all say, if you can avoid having a DACA account to be part of your loan agreement, I would go that route. So this looks like uh, quite a bit of uh, info here. Maybe I can just zoom in and look at one table at a time. So this is looking at, again, I apologize if you can't see this. So this is average rent uh, in aggregate for the property over time. So the blue bars are market rent, white is our actual, but this is uh, for every unit. And so some of these units uh, maybe have been renewed um, or maybe they're at older rent amounts. Um, so it's not as accurate just in terms of uh, what we're getting per unit going forward. So as you can see, we're, we've been closing the Delta over time uh, we've also increased our market rents over time. Um, and this is filtered. We could filter it more if we want to look at every unit. This is filtered just by current units right now and renewed units. Um, we can look at many other variations of that. But so we've been closing the delta uh, there. However, if we look at just new rents, which is a, a better sign of the property um, and the expectations going forward, you can see that we're hitting our market rents on all new rents. Other than this, I'll have to go back and look at this, um, this slight delta here. It might be maybe a, a fat finger mistake perhaps, or, or maybe I did something wrong. I don't know, it could be on the property management side, but I'd go take a look at that. However, the point is that we're achieving our market rents um, at this point. And actually a little bit earlier, um, I would have to go back and, and look, I just wanted to show the last quarter essentially but this property was underwritten with a 12 month stabilization period. And as you can see, April was 12 months, so we're there. Um, and I believe the other months are as well, um, but I have to go back and take a look at that. Um, but then just other things that we can take a look at. Um, I'm not sure why this, screen is so zoomed in here, but there should be a button up here where I can click on 
this if I drill down and it gives me a whole, whole other suite of um, details and KPIs to look at. There's actually just an update for what it's worth in Power BI um, where you know, every so often they, they change uh, some functions and features up. And so this was actually one of them. Um, so I have to go back and take a look at that. But in any case, this is looking at our, our rent growth uh, month over month and with a trailing three month uh, time period. This is simply um, basically this graphic, but in terms of square footage. So if we wanna look at um, overall square footage rented and the reason that this is important to look at, particularly for this property, is if I go forward and have to jump all over, but looking at the landing, two bedrooms have been notoriously uh, lagging. And we think that it's, I mean, looking at the demographics um, and just the overall rent rolls, a large portion of that we think is because the um, main demographics here are, are students. There's quite a large portion of students and then uh, families as well. So they want either a small one bedroom for themselves or they want three bedrooms for them, their buddies or their family. Um, but in any case, that's why we look at square footage um, and just something else to monitor. But overall, over time, we've really been increasing uh, our rents consistently. If we look at the landing, or pardon me, uh, Encore, which is a, again, a newer property. So just in terms of the overall property, um, we have been slowly and steadily increasing rents, uh, both on new leases and renewals. But if you look at just the new rents here, so we're essentially, other than a, a few dollars, we're essentially in line with our market rents, which are matching our pro forma rents. And as I mentioned, we haven't had a huge CapEx spend per unit. Uh, we haven't installed granite in those units that we have touched. And so we really think there's much room here to get uh, potentially a premium above our pro forma rents. Um, not only due to inflation, but if and when we do progress forward with uh, the full CapEx plan and work out the um, granite issues as well. So this is very, very promising um, for us so far. And if we look at just another property, Hollister, which again has, has not had a huge interior value add, we we're quite close uh, already, just in terms of the property after we bumped, um, bumped market rents. But here we're getting premiums um, and our CapEx plan is not done. Um, so this, this property is going quite well. I looked at this um, Delta here and what was the reason for May. This is largely uh, due to noise. February, there was some turnover. But looking at May, if we go to Hollister. So one of the main, um, main reasons here, there was quite a bit of movement uh, in terms of occupancy and move outs. But in addition, some of these units that dropped the most were larger units, which have higher rents. And so that somewhat distorted um, the rent growth there. So this chart can get, can get very, obviously you can see it can get very uh, busy and hard to look at, particularly Hollister. Hollister, is a unique property, as I mentioned, uh, it's comprised of two separate parcels and then a third uh, sliver that used to be a convenience store. And so that's the reason that there's literally, I wanna say 19 different unit types, um, which were, we had a meeting uh, recently with a property management company to try and um, not only shrink this number of units or, or make it somewhat more comparable, but in addition, we wanna have a standardized unit type instead of having each property have different unit types. Uh, we wanna have something more standardized so it's easier to compare. And this is just one additional feature that uh, we're looking to implement so that we can quickly uh, compare different unit types and have more consistency across our portfolio. It's not a huge uh, undertaking. It's more so some admin work and um, you know, some verification in our property management software. Um, but that's one thing that we're looking to do uh, again, just to, to keep um, making our operations more efficient. So this is a Solano. Um, this occupancy, you can see we're, you know, it dipped to 90%. This is largely a, a 
a not unexpected trend. Uh, this is due to us having to uh, turn the tenant base essentially, but we're increasing it. I believe as of today, we're back up to, I want to say 93 or 94%. So we're on the right trend. And in addition, if we were to go back and look at all of our rents um, here as well, we're, we're getting up to our uh, pro forma rents and we still have um, more units to renovate uh, and keep going. So not a, not a worrying trend, but definitely when it hits 90, then yeah, we, we have a, a all hands on deck meeting essentially and say, how can we push this? What's going on? Um, and then you can see the, the growth um, popped back up. But here as well at this property, so for whatever reason, um, this two by one and a half bath unit uh, was lagging quite a bit. And so we've since really targeted that and pushed, pushed that back up. So this is another graph um, we would, when we're reviewing these go and, and look at each graph um, individually, because again, this can be a lot. I know that if this was a, and joking, if this was a McKinsey presentation, you would not show all of these. You would show one, uh, one graphic rather than overwhelm the viewer. But so a couple of things to point out here. Um, this is great to see uh, where all these leads are coming from. This is leads, should sh uh, show leads at the top. But I mean, if leads aren't converted, then they're just numbers on paper. So we're more concerned with this chart down here. And so this is uh, showings, which are coming from the leads to applications to actual leases. Uh, and so we look at our different conversion rates, our showings turning into leases, and then um, are those turning into applications, are those turning into uh, actual leases? And so it, it's interesting to look at, when you dive into this, the different properties and where these leads are coming from. So this is Encore on the Bay, as the name uh, would suggest. This is on, um, on a bay in Southern, Southeastern Houston. And the property itself is, is quite gorgeous and has um, a large, um, a great uh, beauty or great presence from the street. There's quite a bit of curb appeal. So this chunk here is apartments.com. So people looking on, on the website, uh, people you know, just staying home, not wanting to get out and about. And so they make up quite a, quite a large chunk. I mean, this is 59% of total leads, 39% of total leads, 40% of total leads. Um, so those, it is creating uh, traffic for us. However, if you look here, the, the amount of leads that actually turn into showings or leases is, is not super high. I mean, uh, um, looking at that, perhaps these people are looking at the property and they, they don't even need to go see the property in person, which could be a trend maybe with uh, younger demographics, perhaps millennials. Um, we are getting some, some leases out of them, which is great. But if you look at the drive-by category, so people drive by and then they, I mean, the, the data would suggest that they drive by and they wanna stop and go in and look at the property and look at a unit. Uh, and so these are actually turning into leases as well. And I, this is due to the properties, uh, we believe location on the bay. Uh, there's a beautiful pier and deck uh, with a pool right there. Um, so the property itself is, is gorgeous and um, it's interesting to see that. If we look at another property like the landing, so looking here at the drive-bys, uh, similar, these are turning into leases. Um, but if we were to look at Facebook, this has um, garnered a lot of attention here as well. We uh, put in quite a bit of uh, energy and spend into Facebook and our online marketing. And this was done to garner or capture students um, that are uh, largely in the area and a younger demographic as well. Uh, and so it has been paying off for us. Um, you can see the different um, categories as well, apartments.com. You know, people here are usually uh, using more of an online presence, um, you know, to go about searching. One other thing that we, we really like to see is, so just this, it's not a huge amount, but uh, we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't count on it, but so this is prior residents. And so they're referring people, which is a good sign. You're not gonna refer somebody if you're not happy with where you live, uh, management, the amenities, and then current residents uh, as well. You know, these are really strong uh, to see. So I've been getting leases um, as well. So 
happy to see that. And so these are current residents and prior residents. So those are the two things that we definitely monitor as well. We try and do exit interviews um, or at least a survey with tenants as they move out just to collect information on what is, you know, perhaps they had a bad experience with uh, somebody in the management office or maybe they're just moving to a, to a larger place, whatever it may be. We try and see if it's something that we could have done and prevented. Uh, we definitely look at the rents that we uh, were charging on renewals and see if maybe that was an issue. So just we try and get all this additional data so that we can really uh, use it to make tactical decisions for our operations going forward. So moving on to uh, Q3, which we're now in, in our preview. So Timberwalk has uh, kicked off prior, um, pardon me, Broadstone has as well. I didn't include Broadstone on the prior slide just because it's, it's very new and the budget versus actual would have been quite distorted. Um, but so Broadstone, we've completed pretty much all of the um, PCA required and London required repairs and quite a bit of exterior work as well. Um, and we're looking to our, start our interiors there. Timberwalk, we're, we acquired this property less than two weeks ago, but we're already um, soliciting vendors and, and speaking with contractors. Uh, so that is in progress. We'll have, have some updates for you next quarter. Uh, this quarter also is quite busy uh, acquisition wise. So Five Oaks, Briar Court, Madison of Bear Creek uh, is slated to close at the end of this month, but potentially you might push it off to September. Uh, but I included this here regardless anyway. Uh, as I mentioned, Madison of Bear Creek is the property adjacent to Timberwalk. And those are both right where uh, Verandas of Bear Creek used to be. So we're maintaining our presence in that market. Um, but these are all brought, uh, Five Oaks and Briar Court, uh, Madison Bear Creek under contract. Uh, Five Oaks and Briar Court are slated to close quite imminently. Um, and we're so very, uh, very ready and excited to take over these properties and implement our plans there as well. Uh, and lastly, just one thing to mention, I don't know if anybody's received uh, our emails, Rob's emails, uh, but upcoming this quarter, we'll have a, uh, another uh, get together, another New York summit uh, hosted by Rob. There's a number of speakers. Um, so there'll be one and a half days of networking, educational contact, a, a number of uh, really fun, interactive um, activities or events, I should say. But we had one last year. It was uh, really, really well received. I know I had a great time. It was great to meet uh, people face to face, uh, especially after the whole quarantine and all that. Um, so if you haven't yet had a chance to register, uh, there are still, I believe, a few spots open. I think the VIP tickets are all sold. Um, but we will we'll be having more of these going forward in the future. If you're not able to make this, just wanted to mention it. It's um, something that we think is is uh, just great to do, and and welcome anyone to. Uh, to come there if you haven't yet, or if you are scheduled, then look forward to seeing you. That's pretty much all I have. Um, I could go back and speak quite a bit more and dive into things more, but I don't want to get too in the weeds. Um, so does anybody have questions for Rob, myself, our portfolio, what we've done, looking forward? Yeah, Josh, nice work. Uh, good timing. Donnie has a question about anticipated rent increases over August and September, uh, if that factors in for being a moving time for families? Um, I mean, usually we, usually the, the busy moving season is spring, late spring to uh, summer. Um, I guess you're, you're saying August and September with uh, the start of the school year. Um, I guess it would depend per property, but, uh, but is there any more specifics on that question? I mean, we're, we don't no, really I mean, yeah. target a specific demographic with our increases or, or, right. or if you could clarify that question. Yeah, no, I've just seen a lot of increase in rent in New York City. So I'm, I'm curious if you've seen that around there as well. Yeah, pretty much throughout. I mean, New York, uh, Los Angeles, California, those markets for sure have jumped up. All the COVID, um, the COVID deals have pretty much expired. There's, you're not really getting three months of rent um, in addition to rents themselves, just jumped up. Our entire portfolio is in uh, Texas, uh, but still the same. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, we we've seen rents increasing not only due to inflation, but also just as a result of our value add plan. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily tie it to a particular month. It would be more so just 
where are we at in our value add plan? Um, and can we justify those rents and can we get them? Um, but if we can, then absolutely we would. But it's, we, we keep track of the calendar, but it's, it's not like, okay, it's September. Now it's time to bump rents 10%. Yeah, renewals have been very strong over the last over the last year, and I think they'll slowly trend back to normal. But that this inflationary pressure is working through the system and still having a big impact on rents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see that by the units that we haven't uh, done a ton of work to, we're still getting getting premiums there. But yeah, that will likely taper. Got it, cool, thank you. Okay, cool. Well, uh, Josh, I think you might have to jump on a call here. So I think it's good if we wrap up a little bit earlier than normal, but thanks everyone for being here live. Uh, you know, appreciate you guys being here. And Josh, really nice job on the presentation. And I'm looking forward to the continuing build out of the dashboard. Absolutely, likewise. Thank All you, right. everyone. Bye.